Today we will talk about causes of extracellular edema. The important causes of extracellular edema have been broadly classified into four main groups. So the cause is due to increased capillary pressure, the cause is due to decreased plasma proteins, cause is due to increased capillary permeability and cause is due to blockage of, uh, blockage of lymph return. So these are basically four broad categories which have been further divided into subcategories and we are broadly classifying the causes of extracellular edema or the, the a condition, edema basically is a condition in which excess fluid accumulates in the cell or in the extracellular spaces. Now, we must remember and we must revise and summarize the factors basically uh, which are responsible for increasing the capillary filtration. Now if we know the factors that increase the capillary filtration then we will easily understand the causes of the extracellular edema. We in the last two lectures discussed that there are four main forces which are playing their role at the capillary level. The capillary hydrostatic pressure which is basically trying to push the fluid outside the capillary into the interstitial fluid into the interstitium sorry. The interstitial fluid hydrostatic pressure is basically trying to push the fluid from the interstitium from the interstitium into the capillary. The plasma colloid osmotic pressure is trying to pull the fluid from the interstitium into the capillary lumen. And finally, the interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure is trying to pull the fluid from the plasma from the capillary lumen into the interstitium. Now, depending upon these forces, any disturbance in these forces, if these forces are normally acting, some fluid will be going out, some will be coming into the capillary and there will be a normal amount of fluid in the interstitium. But if there is excess fluid in the interstitium, it will be labeled as edema. Now, this excess fluid or this edema occurs when these forces are disturbed. Either of these forces may increase or there may be decrease in any of these forces. Now, depending upon the, the factor which or depending upon which of the force has been affected on that type, there will be different uh, categories of extracellular edema. So first of all, we will decrease, uh, discuss the increased capillary pressure. Now here we have discussed the capillary hydrostatic pressure, which is basically trying to push the fluid out. So the causes are excessive salt and water retention by the kidneys. So a lot of salt and water can be retained by the body in acute renal failure, chronic renal failure or due to mineralocorticoid excess or steroids like aldosterone excess. So in these conditions, if there is a lot of fluid retention, a lot of salt retention and water retention by the kidneys, either in the acute renal failure or chronic renal failure or excess of mineralocorticoids like aldosterone, then there will be increase in the capillary hydrostatic pressure or increased capillary pressure, this force. There will be increase in this force which will be pushing the fluid out into the interstitium. Now, this increased capillary pressure can also occur due to high venous pressure and venous constriction. If the venous pressure is high, if the venous pressure is high or there is venous constriction, then increased capillary pressure can occur. For example, in heart failure, if the heart is unable to pump, then if the heart is unable to pump, fluid will basically accumulate, it will dump in the capillary and fluid will be coming here fluid a lot of fluid will be coming here but it will not be going back because the heart cannot properly pump so a lot of pressure will develop in the capillaries and a lot of fluid will accumulate in the interstitium so heart failure is one cause then a venous obstruction now if this capillary is taking blood this way and there is obstruction fluid is coming this way but it cannot go here because there is venous obstruction then this pressure will build here the pressure in the capillary will increase and fluid will leak out so heart failure or venous obstruction venous ob obstruction in venous pump failure Venous pump failure can occur in muscles inactivity. In muscles inactivity, venous pump failure will occur. Basically, the pump, the, the muscles, they basically help in the uh, circulation of blood. So if there is venous pump failure due to muscle inactivity or any other reason like well dysfunction in the veins, it will also lead to high venous pressure and it will also lead to high venous pressure or uh, there will be increased capillary pressure and it will lead to edema. So these are the causes of increased capillary pressure. Finally, decreased arteriolar resistance. Decreased arteriolar resistance. This will occur basically in vasodilator drugs if such, if the, if there are such drugs which basically dilates these vessels. There will be a lot of fluid coming in and less of the fluid will be going out if there are some drugs which basically dilate these blood vessels. So the, the, the amount of fluid coming into the vessels will increase and it will increase the capillary hydrostatic pressure or the capillary pressure which in turn will lead to uh, which in turn will basically lead to edema. So decreased arteriolar resistance because uh, when the heart is pumping the blood, it is pumping it against some resistance. If that resistance is lost either due to vasodilators or body heat or some drugs. So this uh, these vessels will dilate and fluid will accumulate. The increased pressure will occur and uh, edema will occur due to increased capillary pressure. So these are the subcategories. These are the sub uh, types of uh, edema which basically occurs due to increased capillary pressure. Excessive salt and water retention by the kidneys, high venous pressure or venous constriction, and finally decreased arteriolar resistance. So either the blood cannot uh, go back due to venous constriction, or there is loss of resistance and a lot of uh, blood is coming and is pooling inside the capillaries, which is increasing the capillary pressure. Then another reason, another cause of extracellular edema is decreased plasma proteins. Now decreased plasma protein can occur due to loss of proteins in urine, 
as in nephrotic syndrome. Then loss of proteins can occur from skin as in burns cases or in wounds. And finally, failure to produce proteins like in liver cirrhosis or malnutrition, all these can lead to decreased plasma protein. Now we see that we discussed previously that plasma colloid osmotic pressure, it basically helps in the pulling fluid from the interstitium into the capillary. So if there is less of proteins in the plasma, then this plasma won't be able to pull fluid towards the capillary from the interstitium and fluid will keep on accumulating in the interstitium. So decreased plasma protein will lead to decreased plasma colloid osmotic pressure and it will lead to decreased pulling of fluid from the interstitium into the capillary and it will lead to edema. Now this is basically... I will remind you again, this, this is our previous two lectures. Uh, basically, uh, this is something which we have discussed in our last two lectures. So you can watch those lectures to fully understand the edema, causes of edema. Now, another thing is the increased capillary permeability. Now, coming again to this lecture again. See, we discussed that filtration. Filtration from this capillary is basically uh, is the product of this equation in which an important function is the uh, filtra uh, capillary filtration coefficient. Capillary filtration coefficient is basically the product of permeability of the capillary wall. Either this wall is permeable, either it is allowing something to enter, fluid to enter or not, and the area of this wall. So these two, two things determine the coefficient. So basically, the capillary permeability is an important factor in... Uh, in increasing the filtration and if the filtration increases edema will occur so increased capillary permeability the increased permeability of this wall this wall will become more permeable in these conditions for example in immune reaction if allergic reactions occur or there are some toxins or poisons some bacterial infections uh, deficiency of vitamin c ischemia decreased blood supply or burns so these factors can basically increase the permeability of the membrane the capillary wall and it will ultimately lead to the formation of edema so Immune reactions, toxins, bacterial infections, de deficiency of vitamins, especially vitamin C, ischemia and burns can increase the capillary permeability and can cause edema. Finally, blockage of lymphatic returns. As we previously discussed that these black color large particles, they cannot enter the uh, capillary. So these particles, these large fat and protein particles are basically transported through these black color lymph, uh, lymphatic vessels. If these lymphatic vessels are blocked, then these proteins remain in the interstitium. And due to these proteins, there is interstitial fluid colloid osmotic pressure. This pressure is basically pulling the fluid from the capillary lumen into the interstitium. And it increases the fluid in the interstitium and causes edema. So the factors that increases the blockage will ultimately lead to edema formation. And factors increasing lymphatic blockage or lymph return uh, includes cancer, Infection in the lymph, uh, lymph vessels, uh, surgery, damage to the lymphatic vessels in surgery and congenital absence of any lymph vessels. So these are the main causes of extracellular edema and the causes are basically determined by the force which has been disturbed. If the increased capillary, uh, if the capillary pressure has been disturbed, it has increased, then edema will occur due to these reasons. If proteins formation has decreased or there are decreased proteins, then edema will occur due to these reasons. And if the, there is increased permeability, then these factors will increase the formation of extracellular edema or collection of extracellular fluid and blockage of lymph can occur due to these reasons. You can watch this video again uh, to remember or to understand it fully. Thanks a lot for watching the video.